Hey, what's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Thursday night, uh, June 29th, 2023. It's about 7.55 p.m. along the West Coast, California time. And latest actu activity here on the globe shows a little bit of movement up here into the Alaska region with a 3.4 coming in along the Aleutian Trench. As uh, far as any major large-scale activity goes, we really haven't seen too much today. A couple fours across the Philippine area southward and uh, most of the movement today has been up into the Alaska area. We did have a couple smaller quakes down here across the South America region as well with a 4.7. Uh, that's one of the newer quakes. A little bit of activity across the Turkey region as well. Uh, as far as the West Coast movement goes, very quiet activity here across Southern Cal. Not really seeing anything major going on here across the region today, uh, nor the Northern California area. Um, that also includes the trimmer map here tonight, Cascadia trimmer at about zero epicenters. So that's, uh, that's what it is here tonight. Not a whole lot going on um, as far as earthquake activity goes, but uh, just wanted to jump on here real quick and uh, do a, you know kind of a real quick update. Another area I think we were looking at um, potentially for uptick is around the Puerto Rico area. We did have a 3.8 into the Puerto Rico Trench. That earthquake coming in about 37 kilometers deep. One area that has been uh, fairly active here over the last 24 hours uh, as far as seismic activity goes. Uh, also that earthquake down into Australia. I guess that was a legit and confirmed earthquake. There is the seismic signature there around the Melbourne area of that uh, four-pointer that kicked up earlier. Uh, this afternoon 4.6 looks like the magnitude uh, USGS still not reporting anything on that earthquake at all um, and the EMSC data actually states that this earthquake has not been reviewed yet by a seismologist so I'm not for sure what's going on but uh, it looks like there was an earthquake obviously people felt it and uh, so we'll have to just maybe check a, a bunch of these different agencies here uh, from now on because it seems like uh, it seems like when an earthquake happens it's confined to their own agency it doesn't seem like the uh, USGS wants to pick up on any uh, activity down here for some reason all right uh, also someone asked me here uh, a while back why there's so many earthquakes here across the Pacific ring of fire and the western edge that's going to be this edge here around the uh, uh, Japan area Kurokam Chaka, uh, Izu Trench, the Mariana Trench, uh, got the Papua New Guinea area, uh, Loyalty Islands, Fiji, Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench, Hikarangi Subduction Zone. Why does this area get so much more earthquake activity than, say, the West Coast over here, the Eastern Pacific? where the, Well, there's divergent boundaries out here, right? This is separation of the seafloor. There's a large transform fault here across the North American and the Pacific Plate and a small, well I shouldn't say small, but a subduction zone up here uh, that does accumulate strain, but not as much as everything over here. Almost everywhere across the western Pacific is a subduction zone. That's why we get so many more earthquakes and the general stress in this region um, due to the general plate tectonic activity, um, I, I think a little bit has to do with possibly the rotation of the earth, right? Uh, that would throw all the activity over here to the west. Uh, and we still get earthquake activity, obviously, here. Um, but for, you know, for this amount of earthquake activity, this just goes back to, uh, oh, December 2004 to November 2014. And obviously there's a lot of earthquake activity here. Minimal activity across the eastern Pacific. And that's just due to the type of plate boundary that sits out here. Major subduction zones all along this area. Um, and only one up here, the Cascadia subduction zone with transform faults over here and many other fault systems aside uh, from the subduction zone. So that's the general um, reason that I can explain why we get so many more over there. Uh, obviously we got subduction zones here as well across the South America region due to the divergent boundary. Uh, that's pushing this activity here into the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, the uh, Nazca plate, right? Cocos plate, I believe, is up here, the smaller one. 
So, uh, yeah, I just they get a lot of activity, higher accumulated stress or a slip rate uh, compared to the west coast or the east coast, the eastern segment here of the Pacific Ring of Fire. All right, a real quick uh, glance here at space weather, and then I got to go because I am working on literally zero sleep here over the last um, probably about 48 hours zero uh, I am currently out here in Texas on a little bit of R&R &R, but I will still be doing updates out here and just gonna keep them uh, to a minimum unless something major happens out here we're still watching the sunspot 3354 which does harbor some major potential of a strong flare still got a little development here in the core that looks uh, somewhat promising maybe of another M flare overnight we'll definitely keep an eye on that not seeing any major um, solar storms headed our way for now just continue to keep an eye on that uh, sunspot that's currently facing the earth uh, there was uh, in a looks like a major eruption of plasma on the eastern limb way out there northeastern limb um, yeah, that was not directed to Earth, um, so that plasma and whatnot is going to be um, shot away from the the Earth area. Pretty neat to look at, though. All right, folks, um, I'm going to cut it short. I hope everyone out there has a good night. I'm going to try to get some sleep out here. Got a busy day tomorrow, um, but I did want to jump in real quick and uh, say howdy and uh, just give a quick report tonight. Take care, everyone. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow, early morning. Uh, from Texas. Peace out.